Hello, hello, it's me, it's Monkey Puzzle, and welcome to another episode playing Direwolf 20 FTB for 1.7.10, and as usual lately, I'm still on the Primus server. <laughs> Thanks for joining me again, got a bunch of stuff to do today, you can start by, see if I can do it, ah, there we go, harvesting these ender lilies, I've got quite a few now. And I know you guys seen me do this before, but I just want to show you how much they've expanded. This was from the original, what was it, like 19? And I think that's what it was. And now I've got 40 something. And this is just from, oops, getting the extra ones when I harvest them every time. So the, this is just one of my little chores I do when I get on the server when I haven't been on for a while, um, like today. And so I've got kind of a loose episode in mind for you guys today. And we're going to move through a little list of things I have to do. And let's see how it goes. Let's get these planted. And unless I miss some, we actually got three extra that time. Because there was one blank spot before. And I think I, I got them all planted. So... Yeah, the more you get, the more you get. <laughs> it's kind of like money. It takes money to make money. And so it takes ender lilies to make ender lilies. Uh, there we go. So let's get uh, two more of those out and plant some more. I just expand it a little bit each time I get some more. So when we get a little farther into Thomcraft, we're going to get some golems to automatically do this for me and eliminate some of my chores. But let's look at the list I have for us today. It's way more than we can do. So yeah, I'm not going to read all these to you right now, but you can look at them. There's a bunch of things here. So let's start uh, following up on Batania from last time. So if we go up here, the rain. <laughs> You can see that, uh, yes, I have generated quite a bit of mana. I've got here 12 pools full and three more filling. I had to move these up so that I could get them wherever I wanted here. And I know I don't have to stockpile them like this, but I wanted to wait till you guys were with me so we could take it to the next step together. And over here with the passive generation, so that was the active generation where I'm dropping, right now it's fur planks with the aid of this open crate and this redstone conduit and the hopper and the chest. This chest is just full of the fur planks that's feeding the sterling generators downstairs as well, products of the, the uh, autonomous activator tree farm right there. And we may work on that some today too, because there's another chore in there that I want to eliminate. And then we can also uh, accelerate or yeah, the production, and I'll get into that in a minute. But so yeah, this is the active generation with these endo flames eating it and giving the mana to these distributors and then filling the pools. This is the passive generation with these day blooms and nightshades collecting energy from the day and from the night and sending it into these mana pools. So you can see the difference in the efficiency. And this isn't even totally accurate because there's been times where I had this shut off and this was still running. So I think this beats it probably six to one, if not more, uh, as far as the passive generation. But you can see this does still add up. We did lose a little time on the server because it was crashed for a while. And Chillum and I did a bunch of work to get it fixed up. Uh, if you guys haven't noticed already, I've been graduated to doing some uh, admin work on the server. I've been helping behind the scenes with the tech stuff, which has been my honor to do. And CatDog thanked us both for all the work we had to do to get things working again. And it looks like he gave us an ever full urn, which is fantastic. Thank you, CatDog. Very nice message, too. I'm glad I exist as well, <laughs> most of the time. Um, and this, I think, if we put it right here, I think it keeps this full. And maybe it keeps anything that needs to be full full i'm not sure but let me see if we had a bucket on us i'm not sure if we can take oops take 
water back out of this. No. So we'll have to wait till we actually need to use it to find out. But thank you, cat dog. That was very sweet of you got sweet of you. And it was gonna save me some time with the buckets when we get to making more flowers, which hopefully should be soon. So to solve this problem or not problem, to solve this wonderful asset of these mana pools piling up, I need to make something. And this is gonna require either diamonds or ender pearls. So let's use ender pearls. And I've been trying to stock stockpile some living rock for this. Oh yeah, I have all these ender pearls as well from the little chore I just did. So forgot about that. But these now let's just drop the whole stack in maybe one of these, so we'll leave these ones full right here. Uh, let's throw some. And if there's enough mana in there, instead of being an ender pearl anymore, we get a mana pearl. So this it was just enough to do 11 or 15 there. So now we have 15 mana pearls. And you could do the same thing with diamonds, but obviously I have a lot more man uh ender pearls from that operation than i do diamonds although we're not slack in the in the diamond department either i ran the ender quarry another time on this big piece of land and we're doing okay and i actually was doing that to get ready for something else i want to do today so it looks like right now we have enough living rock to do seven and i can get some more living rock in a moment but what i made with these is mana tablets and mana tablets are great for soaking up the mana in the mana pool. So if I get our Wand of the Forest back on, out, you can see that this mana pool says it's sparing mana to items. If I right-clicked on it, it would be accepting. So let's do the sparing. And I think if we drop that on it, hopefully it will fill up with mana. Oh, I think I picked it up before it was done. Let's drop it on there this time oh, we can just go ahead and drop this one and get back away from it and yeah see how it's getting those little little blue lightning bolt kind of effects that it's picking up the mana and you can see the level going down there it takes a while because i've got so much mana in these they're completely full i've never done this before but basically that's how we pick mana up and move it around i'm not sure how much these hold if they'll hold a full pool's worth or not. Uh, that one looks like it's still working. Let's throw a couple down here. See what those can do. Oh, <laughs> that's going to be a problem. <laughs> Maybe, oh gosh. Uh, we'll, I'll deal with these ones later when we're not on camera. I'm going to have to pick that up and turn that off and so on. But over here we can see what's going on. So, yep, that one's done. So it can pick up a whole pool's worth. And, yep, so one mana tablet looks like equals one mana pool for the most part. So that's great. This is a way to pick this stuff up and move it around. Oh, we got a little... Oh, that's because I had... Hmm, no. I guess the mana pools slightly exceed. <laughs> anyway, pretty close. So, yeah, I just wanted to do that. With you guys on camera i think i'm going to take a moment and i'm going to clean the rest of these up because i want to do something else with you all and set this up a little differently so i'll be right back after i clean up all this mana i got all over the place oh, wrong thing uh, see you in a moment i got that all cleaned up and now out of those 12 full mana pools and there was three only partially full i got what i believe is 15 and a half uh, mana full mana tablets so we're doing pretty good so these are like little energy botania energy sources that you can carry around with you or we can use them to fill mana pools back up where we need them so let's set this up a little bit more efficiently now uh, because they tend to fill up while i'm offline and i do have a way to shut it off i could make it automatic uh, maybe we'll do that too but I want to make this thing called a mana distributor. And this allows one of these mana spreaders to fill up four pools at once. So we'll need the living rock again, and we need to make a new thing, the mana steel. You get mana steel. I've shut that off over there so I can do this. You get the mana steel by dropping iron into a mana pool. 
Let's drop a bunch in there because we'll need this stuff for lots of different things. So there we go. We've got 32 mana steel. Now you can do a lot of things with this. You can make, uh, let's show you. You could make armor like that. Uh, you can make all the standard tools and such. And if you're carrying a mana tablet with you, those things won't take damage. They'll just use up the mana. So that's something we can do in the future. I'm not going to use it for that right now. Instead, we're just going to go ahead and make a couple of those mana distributors. So actually, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to do that and that. Like that. And then, was it like that? Yep, there it is. So two mana distributors. And then we can put these over here somewhere. Maybe... Hmm, I don't want to cover up my skylight, but uh, maybe I have to for now. Or I could probably just put it out here. So let's put a, a mana distributed there. Oh, and we're going to be asymmetrical. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh well, I just have to deal. So let's take these and put them like that. These guys will just have to share one. And then like that. And now, if we get this going again, so I've got this with a shutoff switch now, so I can get it started up. And let's, let's see, let's, for this, let's eliminate this middle mana distributor. And that means I also got to just reconnect these two, which are connected to the middle one. Oh, they've reconnected themselves. So yeah, that one's to that one. And then this one is i can't see oh it's to the other one too so let's send this one to this one and then we'll right click on here and attach it to there and right click on here and attach it to here so there we go these are now sending these to there and it's distributing it among the pools so we're filling up not eight pools since I shared that one, but seven pools at once. So it should take longer for them to get filled. And I've heard that comparators actually can read a mana pool. So let's go ahead and make one. See, comparator right here. I think it we must probably should do the vanilla one just in case. So let's put that on there and let's grab some redstone way more than I need and go back and hook that up so the middle one's gonna fill up first but that's all right let's just start from one of these and this is gonna ugly things up a little bit <laughs> I wish I could get into a mana pool because then I could title this episode swimming in mana but I can't swim in mana so I can't call it that <laughs> it's gonna have to be something else anyway let's see Let's actually start from the other end. I think when these are full, the comparator is going to give a 15 strength signal that we'd, we would want to get all the way to over here, right? So that's one. Oh, but that's going to be that problem. I guess we're going to have to put a repeater there so the signal doesn't get sent back. So we'll have to start counting from here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13. So we need a little bit more in there. Oh, this is so ugly. <laughs> but it, I'll figure out how to do this better later, but I want to just get the point across. Let's see, what's that now? So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Perfect. So if we put the comparator here, then... I'll put a repeater over here and hopefully if it works out right when this thing is full strength this signal will make it all the way over here and then shut this off so now we've got an automatic shut off for this in addition to the manual shut off okay so that's a little Batania stuff for today there's a lot more stuff to do but I'm trying to mix it up today and not just doing a whole Batania episode. So we can turn this back on now because we're going to clear these trees up 
And let's put my vacuum chest back. And let's work on my tree farm a little bit. So I showed you guys a couple episodes ago. Uh, I showed you this. It's on me. The obsidian lumber axe that Aaron gave me. It's unbreakable. It's auto smelt. And it's got luck. So just the having the unbreakable would be an awesome thing. Because one of the things I do behind the scenes all the time is I've got these bronze lumber axes here, here all the way across. And every two days or so, I got to take all 12 of them and send them through here to fix them up. Just doing this little operation. And it takes quite a bit of time. And I got to do this a whole bunch of times, even more times, because it's usually more damaged when I pick it up. So that was good in the beginning. But I want to stop having to do that. So even if these were just unbreakable, that would be great. But what this adds is also it automatically turns the logs into charcoal, which I wouldn't want if it was just that, because using the sawmill downstairs in the machine room is more slightly more efficient than turning it into charcoal. I'm not sure, though, if I wasn't using power to do it, but what the luck part does it actually multiplies the amount of charcoal that you get so that's pretty amazing so the way he did this is let me see i got all my stuff in here i already let me get rid of all this bronze i'm carrying on me so i can make a little space in my inventory and hmm, i wonder where i got this chest from i forget uh, let's just put it back in there for now and grab these things so i've got lots of large obsidian plates obsidian broad axe heads paper large plates paper tough bindings and paper tough rods so i'm going to make 12 more of these and the way he did it is the head is obsidian obsidian broad axe head which adds reinforced three already although the durability is going to be pretty low because the rest of it's paper a f uh, <laughs> almost completely paper tool except for the head but what we get out of this is a whole bunch of modifiers and it's going to take all the modifiers possible in order to get this to work so wow that's <laughs> kind of loud so let's throw them all in there i'll throw these ones in too that's fine and let's make the last two and then what we're going to need to do is put seven obsidian plates each. Now they only start with six modifiers. So we're gonna have to go through the full modification on all of these. So we're gonna, for each ax, we're going to, what am I doing wrong? There, we're gonna add on that modifier. We're gonna add on this modifier. And we're gonna add on this modifier so then now i've got nine modifiers on here so then what we got to do is do that seven times and so i don't mess up let me just put six in here so it's impossible for me to goof and go ahead and do all those so now i've got two modifiers remaining and it just hit unbreakable so this thing you can use as much as you want and it's going to be slow, but it will never break. And so then the last two things I got to do to it is I got to add the, it's a kind of crystal. What's it called? It's the lava crystal. And I already hit, went ahead and put the lava buckets in here. We're going to need 12 of these lava crystals. And if I just do that, I should get it right. Yep. So we got those. And we're going to need a whole bunch of lapis. So let's grab some blocks. And let's go ahead and grab some loose ones. Go ahead, grab a couple stacks of those. And then now, with the two modifiers remaining, one's going to get a lava crystal. And that gives us the auto smelt. And the rest is going to get a full complement of lapis. Got to put 450 lapis on there. So let's just speed up to that. 
here's the last one i believe yep that's it and you can see how much lapis it took luckily the ore distribution in this pack gives a ridiculous amount of lapis but there we go we've made one of them now the and we're ready to make a whole lot more of the obsidian writable unbreakable auto smell luck <laughs> lumber axe so this is going to put us back onto the charcoal economy in a big way so we're going to be getting extra charcoal so and with i'll never have to fix those axes up there again so i'm going to pop out for a minute and i'm going to get some more nether stars and i'm going to finish making the rest of those and then we'll stick them in there and we'll see how that goes so see you in a moment all right, killed a bunch of withers, seven of them to be precise, and I already sent some up, but one of the benefits of killing withers down here is every time one explodes in a new passageway I put them in, I find more diamonds. Something about where I am right now is just full of diamonds everywhere. We're in the rainforest. I don't know if the rainforest is uh, particularly rich or not, but anyway, just wanted to tell you guys that, and I will see you upstairs. A whole bunch of work and materials later, and there is the 12th one. So we have 12 of those now, and that's awesome. I'm not gonna have to repair my lumber axes anymore, and we're gonna just get tons and tons of charcoal magically. <laughs> so this is a big upgrade for the tree farm. Now there's one other thing I wanna do at the end of this episode, to tie things up and I really should stop now <laughs> basically I'm out of time but they really tie them together so I'm just going to try to blaze through it uh, probably do a few cuts oh, <laughs> let me get back from the twilight forest uh, but I'll probably do a few cuts and get through this real quick all right so I got all the axes put in there all the new ones and let's see the charcoal rain from the sky. So that's awesome. As soon as that builds up a little bit more, we shall move to a charcoal economy, both down in the sterling generators and uh, up here with the end of flames. So the last thing I was talking about that I wanted to put to tie it all together is a flower called the Agra Carnation. And it's made like this. And what it does is it acts like perpetual bone meal and makes things grow faster so that this tree farm, which was already ridiculously uh, <laughs> oversupplying me, uh, will do so even more. <laughs> and it really puts these two things together. So to do this, we need to make the runic altar, which should really get a whole episode. And it's the next level of crafting after that. So let's place it, uh, let's say right here. And it's going to need one of these, a mana spreader. Going straight to it. Let's make sure that they're connected. So that it, that's that. And we're gonna place things in here. And uh, the first set of things is this. And what we do is we just click on here and the things start spinning around it. I don't think they have to go in any particular order, but I'll find out real quick. So there's the first one. Now this is gonna fill that full of juice. I think I got a click on it yeah and that's going to fill it full of juice we're going to grab some more of these living rocks and as soon as we get this little lightning uh thing here oh, you can see there when i are going around that little red rune down in the lower right there by my cursor you can see the progress so i'll zip through that okay and we're getting a little light man of lightning so we're ready and i think you just throw that on top and you click with your wand and you get the things you wanted. So these were the Rune of Fire. Next thing are these, and I forget the name of what we're making. Uh, let me just throw all this stuff up there. I'll need that. We'll throw these things down here. I'll throw that up. <laughs> Woo, okay. So one, two, three. Dunk, dunk, dunk. Is that everything I needed? I think so. Let's go like that. Yep, and it's gonna charge it up again, and I'll meet you there. All right, it's all charged up now, so let's throw the living rock on again. Gotta make it, there we go, and we'll click. 
All right, and what did we get? We got the runes of water. And then with those two things that I just made, plus these, oops, <laughs> it recovered from that. Three oak trees, I thought. Uh, let's get that in there and that. Um, and one of those. And one of those. Now, can I get that other oak tree in there? There we go. That's the whole thing I wanted. Click on it again. Let it charge up. There it is. It's ready to go. And we throw our rock on there again. And click with our wand of the forest. Bam! And we get the thing we were going for, which is the rune of spring. And one other new thing we'll need is this redstone root. Grass plus redstone. And then all that... Uh, plus these things, so we won't need these, but we will need these. And I went a, already went ahead and manned up the petals that we need, and hopefully I got everything right. We'll just go up here and we'll uh, throw them all in. So two limes, one mana lime, one mana green, mana red, yellow, and the rune of spring. Oh, and let's not forget our... Uh, whatever this root is called again, and then we need a seed Right there and See if I got it right Bam, I got the agricarnation and now you can also see looks like the ever full urn just filled up my petal apothecary Thank you cat dog So the point of all this was to plant this here and it's gonna need some mana I think it needs a mana pool next to it, if I got this right. So let's grab a mana pool. I got another mana spreader. And let's throw it here. I don't know how close it needs to be. Hopefully I'm getting this right. And let's grab it from here and see if this can reach. So if we right click on, right shift, shift right click on that and shift right click on that. Hopefully, that can make it there without too much loss. Yep, that's working. This is shimmering. Now these things should start growing even faster. Let me hold on for a second. Oh, yeah, it's full of mana, so that's working. So let me hang out for a moment and see if these trees start growing. Yep, you can see the little particle effects starting to happen on the saplings. Okay, there we go. There's our first one. Um, so far, that's not too remarkably fast, but I do see the effects. We could have also put this over here, and these things would grow a lot faster. Anyway, time will tell, but oh, theoretically, my trees are growing faster now, which means we'll get even more charcoal at this point. So there you go. We got the, the uh, Botania plus the Tinker's Construct uh, put all together with the autonomous activators and that's today's episode so we knocked out a good portion of the stuff on this list but not everything we got that we got that and we got that so next time we'll move further in thomcraft we got to make some steel maybe do a little forestry oh and i've got some new places scoped out that i think i may make my next bases at um, so I will have to show you those next time. For now, this is Monkey Puzzle, and I'm signing out. Bye-bye.